So Ashley is the oldest of our four children and she just turned 16 this past month in November. I'm just floored that I get to be her dad. And she has been just an absolute blessing. And she's wise beyond her years and has such a care and concern for other people. I think that's what makes you most proud. The thing you want to hear most is that, that you know, your kid loves God and loves neighbor. She came home from youth group and told me that she felt this lump behind her ear and I felt it and you know I thought oh gosh what is that. My name is Ryan Osborne. I trained as a head and neck surgeon in South Central Los Angeles, managing the most complex cancer and trauma patients in the country. I've operated across the globe in first and third world countries. My experiences have taught me the value of flexible and innovative thinking, but I realized that our healthcare system doesn't always allow for that. So I started Osborne Head and Neck Institute. I made it my mission to find the best, most creative surgeons around, and I gave them the space to excel. Together, we create a new standard of medicine. These are our stories. Yorkville, population 2000. It's the embodiment of small town America. Located in Illinois, these bucolic streets and snowy fields, this is the stuff movies are made of. You've heard about those places where everyone knows each other and all the kids go to the exact same school? That's Yorkville. This is pretty different from Southern California. We shiver when it hits 60 degrees. But Yorkville, they just saw the coldest day in their history minus 13 degrees with the wind chill. LA is perpetually sunny and full of traffic, and it feels completely different than Yorkville. But the reality is it's not. There are families in Yorkville that are just like mine. Our story is about one of these families, one that feels as normal and familiar as my own. This is about the Malis family and their oldest daughter, Ashley. She's 16. That's the same age as my own daughter. I understand what her father's going through. My daughter expects me to have all the answers. As kids get older, their problems get bigger. And as parents, we can't always fix them. I know that feeling of helplessness. We have to look outside ourselves. And there's nothing scarier than that. This made Yorkville feel a little closer to home for me. My name is Ashley Malis. I go to Yorkville High School. I'm a sophomore and I'm 16 years old. She's a great student and loves to write. I love art, drawing, painting. I have a degree from the School of the Art Institute in Chicago and she is definitely surpassed me in her skill level and it's so exciting to see her go and you know, want to pursue the arts. That's such a fun thing that I can do with her. I love to run. I do cross country. Good job, Ashley. Let's go, Ashley. Go. So every Wednesday night, I meet with some of the kids from my church, and we do youth group. That can be just sitting around, you know, reading God's word. You covered me in my mother's womb. I will praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. I was actually at youth group and I'm just sitting and all of a sudden I felt this on my neck and I was like, oh my gosh, what is that? You know, and of course your mind goes to the worst and you just think, you know, like this could be, you know, anything and you know, um, so I get home and I talk to my mom and I'm like, mom, you know, what is this? I took her in to urgent care. Um, in the afternoon of the next day and the doctor who felt it said that it was really nothing that There was no treatment for it that it was probably just an infection of her gland and that it would go away So wait two weeks if it's still there um, Come back and two weeks later. It was still there. So I thought okay. We should go to the pediatrician and see what what we should do about this and 
her pediatrician immediately said, you know, we should do some blood work. You should see an ENT. We went uh, in for the appointment with the ENT, and he said that he wanted a biopsy done. And uh, we didn't tell Ashley that a biopsy is checking for cancer, so at least she didn't have to worry about that. They told me that it was actually a tumor in my um, gland. And then on that Monday or Tuesday, um, it was his 40th birthday. Yeah, it's on my birthday. And we got the news that it was benign, so that was a huge relief. But I was kind of thinking in the back of my mind that hmm. we're probably going to still have to have surgery because the research I was doing online was that, you know, you've got to remove these things because they can become cancer. The appointment didn't go very well in my mind with the ENT. He said that it needed to be removed or it could turn cancerous, which I absolutely, you know, wanted to stay away from. He described to us the surgery and the risks. And as he was, you know, talking, I'm just like, you know, thinking the worst. Like when they said um, that there was a chance of facial paralysis, my mind went to the worst. He had described that the incision would go from the top of her ear all the way down, you know, her neck, and possibly a um, divot in her face from the removal of the tumor. I heard some stories about people experiencing after the surgery um, sweating on their face when they were hungry. And numbness in the ear. And during the whole appointment, I kept looking over at Ashley, asking her, are you doing okay? Are you doing okay? And I could tell that she was just really upset by the situation. I just thought that, you know, that's going to happen, you know. And this is where, you know, as I'm sitting listening to him, I'm thinking, okay, it's time to do research. I need to find, uh, you know, another doctor or second opinion or something because it was more involved than I thought. I was like kind of shaking, trying to hold back, you know, tears while I'm in the office. And as soon as I left, I just broke down crying. Um, and I, I was thinking, okay, I'm, I've got to find, I've got to find something else. Um, there's got to be something else out there um, or a different approach to the surgery. All the data known about parotid tumors has nothing to do with teenagers. It's all based on people in their 50s and 60s. So she's unique in the sense that this tumor uh, has presented itself very early in her uh, chronological uh, timeline. I mean, she should actually um, be dealing with this uh, 30, 40 years from now. So that tells you that this tumor is growing a lot faster. I wanted to get rid of it immediately. And we knew that kind of as a family going into that, that either way it was going to be needed to be removed. So from there, it was just finding the right doctor to do the job. Whenever I see a patient under the age of 40, I realize that their recurrence rate is five times higher than someone who presents at age 60 or 70. So you've got to go in there with the intention of trying to make this a one and done deal. You don't want to sit there and try to be nice and I'm only going to take out a small amount of tissue here because I don't want to change the way they look too much. You have to look at their whole life. If they have to come back for a second, third, fourth, fifth, we've got patients who have come to us who've had 15 operations by other surgeons. You, you're not doing them a favor at that point. So you kind of got to have the courage to kind of muster it up and say, listen, I am going to be a little bit more aggressive here, but hopefully I'm going to end this thing right now. And I'm going to put you back on the path of uh, where you should be. So that night as I was cooking dinner, I started getting on the internet and doing research. And that's when I came across Dr. Osborne's website. And it was a huge relief to find mm -hmm that there was another option besides having to do this pretty invasive surgery. As soon as I heard that, you know, there would be minimal scar and that I wouldn't have, you know, um, there wasn't, there was much less of a chance of facial paralysis. Um, I felt so much better. The next day I made phone calls all day long, um, trying to see if there was any local doctors that could do it, you know, at Children's um, in Chicago or any of the ENTs around here. But from my research, it was just uh, Dr. Osborne was the pioneer of this procedure. And so especially knowing that he does these surgeries multiple times a week was a huge comfort because the ENT that we saw only does about 10 of them a year.
I talked to him and, and he, even he said that this is not one of his areas of, of a specialization. And other doctors I called in Chicago only did a few of them a year and I kind of kept coming up with that same low number, especially with dealing with the facial nerve. I really wanted someone who had a lot of experience in this type of surgery, especially since we're dealing with a, a teenage daughter. We want to be able to give her the best possible results from the surgery and put her in the hands of someone who has done the surgery over and over and over again. Some of the difficulties with this case and just trying to manage it um, believe it or not, kind of come from, uh, from me as well. Uh, when her mom reached out to me, uh, she was very eager to move forward with surgery with us, and she wanted to have surgery around Christmas time. And a lot of people don't consider this, but I actually love Christmas. It's one of my favorite holidays. And I try not to do anything that might um, be too complex around those times, because if things don't go well, I do not want uh, for my memories of that time period to be associated with a bad outcome. I think any time you, you go under the knife and you, you have to go under full anesthetic and just the, the warnings and, and disclosures are always given with any surgery can create a certain amount of anxiety. But on the whole, I, I don't feel too worried myself. I'm, I'm very, very excited about you know, the, the specialists that we found here. With, with Dr. Osborne, and so there's, there's not too much worry. I think more than anything, there's just this overwhelming sense of gratitude that, that we found this as quickly as we have and been able to address it so quickly um, through one of the, the best in, in the country. The big issue with this case is obviously she's a teenager. She's 16 years old. At 16 years of age, I mean, you're supposed to be thinking about the prom, um, probably your social life. Uh, nowadays, people are probably doing selfies all the time. Uh, texting their friends, going to parties, uh, trying to figure out what they want to do with their lives, maybe looking at colleges. You are not supposed to be debating whether or not to have a surgery that could alter um, the way the world sees you. You're not supposed to have to answer the question, could you accept being paralyzed on one side of your face? You're not supposed to ask the question or be asked the question, um, do I have a cancer or not? You're not supposed to have to deal with the possibility of um, having to go on to have uh, disfiguring surgery. I think I was more scared when I first found out. Now I'm just, you know, waiting to go to California. I'm not really scared. There are a lot of things I think that Ashley is being asked to do at such a very young age. And she's handling it with, with such poise. I'm not afraid just knowing that I'm in the hands of world-renowned doctors. I just, I feel just a sense of calm as I'm going into this. But I think a lot of that just comes from the strength of her faith, um, both in God and her family and her parents and her community and in her friends. And it's very self-evident um, that she's a very well uh, composed and put together young lady. God's telling me that it's gonna be okay, like whatever happens and you know, I think my strength doesn't come from myself, that it comes from him. So I honestly wouldn't be this strong right now if I didn't have him. This is a high risk case. She's 16 years old. She's uh, at the beginning of her life. She's young. She's a beautiful young lady, uh, both inside and out. And she's got a lot of things going for her. Uh, I don't want to uh, hurt her and attempt to help her and at the same time. If it doesn't go well, I'm never going to forget this. Whenever I think about Christmas, I'm going to think about Ashley. So I actually did have a little bit of a hesitation uh, about moving forward with this surgery. But despite that, um, I decided to move forward um, because what better Christmas gift could you give to her and her family than to get this tumor out and to restore her back to her normal uh, baseline and get her back to um, doing the things that a 16 year old should actually be doing. Lord, you were so gracious to bring us to this place. This morning, I ask that you would give grace to Dr. Osborne and Dr. Ham Hamilton so that uh, you would guide their hands. Uh, I pray for a peace that passes all understanding to be with Ashley. 
and all of us. We thank you for these doctors. We thank you for this place. And um, we trust you. In your name, amen. 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 That was great. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. All right. We're going to take care of her. Thank you. All right. It's time for us to do what we do. Let's get to work. The thing that I noticed about Ashley that, that really stood out was her calmness, her demeanor. And it was a little unnerving because she had such confidence in us. I mean, she felt so comfortable that we were going to do this surgery successfully that she really just, she had no real questions. She wasn't, didn't seem to be too concerned. I mean, she had normal anxiety that every patient has, but not the kind of anxiety that you should have at 16. I mean, you really should be like bawling on the floor and throwing a tantrum and saying, why me? But she really didn't. She just said, you know, I'm comfortable with my team. Uh, I have faith in you. I have faith in God. And whatever happens is going to be okay. And that's just the kind of, um, I guess, internal fortitude that you usually don't develop until you are far, far, um, further down that road of life. Look at that, the IVs in. Yeah. Just like that. <laughs> We're in good shape. It's gonna hit you pretty quick, okay? Good. You'll feel this in <laughs> probably 15 to 20 seconds. It'll make you nice and relaxed. Might make us seem kind of silly. Mm -hmm. Might make you kind of giggly as well. Don't forget about the truth, sir. <laughs> That's right. That's coming in next. Get you nice and relaxed and hopefully prevent any nausea, okay? Surgery's getting ready to start in a few minutes. Uh, we had a great prayer session. I feel, I feel ready. Um, I'm calm and I'm not concerned. Um, I feel like our team is ready to go. Um, Ashley's ready to go. And it's gonna be what it's supposed to be. So the surgery went great. Uh, I couldn't be more pleased with the result. Ashley, your surgery's over. Ashley, can you hear me? Ashley, you're just moving on. We're right here with you. Everything went really well. Can you give me a big, big deep breath? Big deep breath. Give me a big cough, Ashley. I was a little concerned about um, whether we would be able to get a margin around this tumor, but we were. Um, we actually removed some of the layers uh, on top of the gland which served as a um, circumferential margin to ensure that we didn't spill any of this tumor out into um, the surrounding area. 
So I'm, I'm very, very, very happy with that. Uh, in addition, her nerve was uh, readily, um, easily to identify. Uh, it was stimulated during surgery at the end of the case and it completely moved normal, so I have no issues or concerns. Dr. Hamilton did a fantastic job of reconstruction. My role is to make sure that um, once the surgery is completed, that there's no evidence um, that we were in there in the first place, so that Ashley doesn't have a dent in the side of her face, that she doesn't have any problems with something we call Fry syndrome, which is where the patients may continue to sweat on the side of the face when they're eating and um, that overall there's little to no scarring at all after the procedure. And so for Ashley, we were able to successfully do that. And I think that long term, uh, there'll be no evidence whatsoever that she ever had surgery and she'll be able to put this behind her. I think she's gonna be very happy with these results. Can you open your eyes? Can you raise your eyebrows? Can you close your eyes tight? Can you smile? Like you won the lotto, bigger, bigger smile. Can you pucker? Like you're giving a kiss? Perfect. Surgery's over. Tumor's out. And your face moves perfectly. Your coach called. He said you need to be back at practice next week. I'm just kidding. That's as good as it gets. You know, when I'm looking at Ashley, I'm just thinking about my own daughter. So I have a high school age daughter as well and I couldn't imagine that you know if we got the news that she had a tumor and that you know there's a possibility of it being malignant um, how, what that would do to our family and when I'm looking at Ashley I'm just basically thinking about uh, my daughter and Dr. Osborne has a teenage daughter and you know how would we feel if our children were in that situation and I think that makes the case a little different I mean um, you know, we treat all patients the same, and, but there's, you know, these particular cases that really touch your heart and make you feel that, um, I mean, I always give my best, but we have to go the extra mile here. Um, and I feel that in Ashley's case, that was really palpable for us during the procedure. Um, we, we wanted this to go as if, um, you know, our own daughters were having the surgery, and that's how we approached it. And I think that part of the success was um, the faith that Ashley had in her parents, um, and in turn, the faith her parents had in us, and um, us looking at her like she was part of our family. And when you put all that together, and um, with a little bit of prayer, I think you come out with a great result. report came back. Benign. 1.8 centimeters, which is roughly two centimeters. Okay. The entire specimen was removed with normal tissue surrounding it. So it was completely taken out. There were no little pieces left behind. Mm -hmm. I mean, just, if everything went the way I feel like it went, no more surgery for you. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it's an awesome situation. This is where we want to be. I feel very good about the fact that this is a one and done for her, that we're going to put this behind her and she's going to take off and never have to deal with this again. I'm, I'm very, very happy with this. You know, live your life, do your thing, go for it, um, put this behind you and do something great. Yeah, thank you. Which I'm sure you will. I think it's just been such a blessing to be here 
at the Osborne Head and Neck Institute. Mm -hmm. Everyone has been so kind and so compassionate mm -hmm. through the whole process. Amazing doctors. You can tell that they really love what they do and they love their patients. Mm -hmm. We're just super grateful and uh, so glad that this procedure went so well and Ashley's feeling, feeling mm -hmm. great. The other really interesting part of this case is that um, Ashley and her family only got this diagnosis maybe a month ago and uh, right before the holidays and you know Christmas is coming up and I think that this is not the time of the year when you're thinking about having surgery or you know fearing for your daughter's life and knowing that this went well and that we were able to do the surgery successfully I feel like that was the best Christmas present we could ever give her family. It's very interesting because she's coming from a very small, um, typical uh, Midwest town, coming to the big city, big bad Los Angeles. And I think that we thought we were gonna be teaching her something, but there is no question that she and her family taught us something. They taught us to um, adhere to the things that have gotten you this far in life. Whatever you have faith in, this is not the time to abandon it, but it's the time to grasp it tighter and pull it into you. Uh, so I would say for sure, um, at the end of the day, uh, the young one taught the old one a lesson, and um, it's a lesson we should all learn.